meet Groucho Marx. They've probably seen me and won't come in, huh? <laughs> Say the secret word and divide a hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Andre Horne and Lorna Young, huh? Well, you're a very attractive couple. <laughs> Lorna, how old are you? I'm 18. 18, huh? Mm -hmm. And Andre, what is your age? I'm 20, sir. Uh, Lorna, when is the wedding? Eh? <laughs> what wedding? I don't know of any wedding. Wouldn't you like to get married, Andre? Well, I've still got one year of school left, and then I've got three years in service, and then I think I'll just wait at least three years before I get married. You'll be about 100 by the time you get married. <coughs> and if you think Lorna, a girl who looks like this, is going to wait around for 10 or 12 years, you are barking up the wrong tree, my lad. And if Lorna was up a tree, I'd be barking up there too. <laughs> Lorna, let's find out something about you. Plenty, too. Uh. <coughs> Were you always this pretty, Lorna? Uh, I guess I... <laughs> That's I a guess. very embarrassing question. <laughs> I understand just how you feel, but you are really a beauty. Thank you. Where's your hometown? I'm from Salt Lake City, Utah. Oh, really? Well, all the beauties come from there, you know. That's the legendary town for beauties. What sort of work do you do, Lorna? I'm a freshman at University of Southern California. Oh. Well, what are you studying besides boys and the single wing? <laughs> I'm, I'm majoring in, in English. English? Uh -huh. I'm going into secondary education. Is that so? Mm -hmm. I'm going into my second childhood. <laughs> Andre, where were you born? In Paris. Oh, bon appetit. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I don't handle that language, huh? <laughs> you have no accent at all, Andrew. How do you account for that? Well, when I was nine, we moved to Dallas, Texas. <laughs> Most people go from Texas to Dallas, uh, <laughs> Texas to Paris. You went from Paris to Texas, huh? Well, uh, we There's moved... a Paris in Texas, isn't there? Yes, sir, there is. That wasn't the Paris that you were... No, sir. That you came from. Paris, France. What do I you think of him? Uh, uh, I think he's very nice. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's a qualifying compliment. <laughs> well, I'm surprised that a girl as pretty and charming as you are isn't either a car hop or an actress. Uh, have you ever been in any beauty contest? Yes, I've been in one. I thought so. How'd you make up? I was in uh, the contest for America's pretty, Prettiest Schoolgirl, and I was the winner. Oh. Well, Andrew, what do you think of Lorna? Are, are you still disinterested? Well, she's a nice girl, but I'd like to be friends, but I don't plan to get married for a while yet. <laughs> still sticking to that story, eh? Well, I tried. Did you win anything besides the title, Lorna? Like a baseball bat? Or yes, I won a thousand... Catch his mask, huh? I won a thousand dollars in cash and a thousand dollar wardrobe. Did you hear that, Andrew? All Prettiest right. girl in America, $1,000 in the bank, and all the clothes she needs for at least five years. <laughs> what more can any man ask? What is your answer, Andre? Well, I still got to go back. <laughs> I give up. Lana, do you want me to find somebody else for you? No, I think Andre's very nice, but I, I want to go to school, too. Well, neither of you wants to get married, then. Right? Not for a while. Well, you're not going to stop the old quiz master that easy. <laughs> I've got my heart set on this marriage. <laughs> right, George, I won't take no for an answer. Andrea, is that clear? Yes. Lorna, did you hear me? Yes. Good, you both said yes, and I pronounce you man and wife. <laughs> and I don't want another word out of either of you. Right? <laughs> Well, you're a charming and uncooperative couple, right? <laughs> and I wish you Godspeed and lots of luck. And keep me advised if anything comes of this union, huh? <laughs> you selected American history. Remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, what do you want to start with? Mm -hmm. okay. How much? Seventy. Seventy dollars. The Dutch originally called the city of New York by another name. What was it? New Amsterdam. New Amsterdam. I'm, you know, on the answers, you don't have to kiss her. You just, uh... <laughs> That's right, it's New Amsterdam, and now you're $70 richer. Now I have $170. Okay, okay. 80? 
Who was president of the Confederate States of America? Jefferson Davis. <laughs> Jefferson Davis. Jefferson Davis is right. Yes. Now I have $250. All right. Now what are you going to go for? 90. 90. In addition to Lorna, I mean. Huh? <laughs> 90. 90. 90. What was the name of the settlement founded in 1607 by Captain John Smith? <laughs> Talk it over, and if you don't know, <laughs> guess. Guess. Connecticut? No, it was Jamestown. Oh, Virginia. Well, you lost half your 250. You now have 125. All right, now don't get discouraged. It's your last chance to be the other couples. What are you going to go for? You want to? Okay. A hundred? Yes, sir. Who was the religious leader who founded Providence, Rhode Island in 1636? Uh. No, no, no. Yes. Quick guess. Go on. I don't know. No. Go ahead, you guess. Roger Williams. Williams. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh. Well, you, you wind up with $62.50. Well, that's a shame. Thank Sorry you. didn't win. Roger, just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Miss Luana Kamakua. Her partner is Mr. Lynn Britton. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common way, something you always have with you. Moana Kamakua, where are you from? Well, I was born in Hawaii, but when I'm I was... I'm all right. How are you? <laughs> I was born in Hawaii, but when I was 18 months old, my family came over here to San Francisco. Oh. Well, why'd you leave so early? Huh? Well, I didn't have much to say about it. I see. How old are you, Moana? 23. 23? Yeah, well, you're fine-looking 23. Isn't it wonderful to be young enough to give an honest answer to a question? <laughs> I assume you have a job, Moana. Who do you work for? Well, right. What did you say? Well, right. You sound like a telegram. Having a fine time, Well, right. <laughs> Why, that's a very expensive place, Will Wright. That's the kind of the Roman house of the ice cream trade, isn't it? Mm-hmm. What is the most expensive ice cream you serve? Well, it's called Nestle Road Beulah. Nestle Road Beulah? It's $2.50 a quart. Two and a half a quart? Mm-hmm. <laughs> For a dollar ninety-eight, I can get a fifth. <laughs> Let's see, who are you again? Uh, you are Moana Kamakua. You are no sir. Well, who are you? Oh, you're Lane Britton. Yes, sir. Oh. Well, uh, where are you from, uh, Lane? I'm from Texas. Texas. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get it over with. I'll give you 10 seconds to advertise Texas. Well, everybody in the world knows that Texas is the greatest state in the Union. It reminds me of a story. During the war, there was a little Texan. Had made about... A little Texan? Yeah. <laughs> a little. Had made I'd about five... you on sight when you go back there. Well, a big Texan. You're darn right. He no made about Texan. five or six beachheads with the loot. If there was a little Texan there, he was probably from New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyhow, when he got to Japan, He's Wait a minute. Up this yeah, well, they've already gone to Japan now. We've oh. got them over there. The, uh, the captain and the uh, Texan. Oh. So at the time... It's very interesting there. because I don't remember the first part of what he was talking <laughs> So? So, when I got over there, that uh, when they got there with this big volcano, I think they called it the Fujiyami, was uh, erupting and throwing fire and smoke and everything all over the country. So they kind of walked up the crater and looked in. And, all, and this lieutenant said to the Texan, he said, if you got anything like this in Texas, he says, no, sir, but you can bet your life that the Dallas Fire Department can put it out in two minutes. If anybody wants to take a nap, this is the time to do it. <laughs> what part of uh, Texas were you born in, Lane? Monday. No, I didn't ask you when. I asked you where you were Monday. born. It's 19 miles north of Wichita Falls. Monday? Yes, sir. Well, what is the chief industry of Monday? Oh, it's uh, farming and the cattle and sheep raising and things like that. But anyhow, when I was a kid, about, oh, I guess two years old, I moved to a town called Stevensville. That's Nevath County. Uh -huh. That's 65 miles north, uh, south, about west of Fort Worth on the way to El Paso. All right, back to Stevensville. <laughs> you know, Lane doesn't seem like the proper handle for a Texas buckaroo. Uh, 
Don't they call you Tex or Slim or something like that? Don't they call me Shotgun? Shotgun, show sure enough, huh? <laughs> what sort of work do you do now, Shot? I'm a you don't call, call you Shot for yes, sure, huh? Me. You call me Shot too, huh? I'm a Shot now. Uh... I'm a makeup artist. A makeup? Is this true? The motion picture industry, yes. Sir. Is that so? Who have you made up, spray gun? I mean, shotgun. <laughs> well, who have you made up? Well, I mean, of Jane Russell, Ava Gardner, Jean Simmons, Barbara Stanwyck. You make up all these beautiful girls and, and you, you still want to go back to Texas? Well, uh... He's been chewing the old loco weed. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's cut out the chatter and play you bet your life. I'm sure both of you would rather get rich and just stand here and talk. Isn't that true? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. In the race for the $1,500, the first couple won $62.50. And the secret word is smile. You select the sports, and now what do you want to start with? 10, 20, all the way up to 100. Is that 50? About 50. Okay. $50. What college team is known as the Sooners? Oklahoma. $8. <laughs> well, you now have $150. What happened? $150. Now, what are you going to go for? Well, we've got 100 and a half. Let's go for 80. 80? 80. 80. In baseball, what is the Keystone sack? Which base is the Keystone sack? First. Now you were close at second base. You lost half your 150, you now have 75. All right, all right, you're still going. Now what are you going to go for? Let's have 70. Okay. 70? What do you call the horse race in which the entries are horses that have never won a race? Say it. Maiden. Maiden race is right, huh? You now have $145. Right, maiden race. Used to be made in Japan. Now it's maiden race. Huh? <laughs> is your last chance to be the other couples? All right. How much? $100. $100. What horse race dating back to 1839 has run yearly at the Aintree Course in Liverpool, England? Grand National? That is absolutely right, the Grand National. And you wind up with $245. The, um, a couple of special guests right now. Uh, the first one is uh, one of the greatest boxers that we've ever known, Mr. Mickey Walker. And the uh, second guest is somebody that you know a little better than I do, so I thought maybe you uh, might want to introduce her. No matter who she is, she gets no different treatment than any other contestant, George. You know that. Now, introduce her. All right. Uh, we play we no a... favorites here. Okay, we have a schoolgirl for you, Groucho. schoolgirl? Yes. Miss Melinda Marks. Oh. So, folks, you should come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. <laughs> Say the secret word, and one of you gets $50, and I've got to keep the other 50 And I get to keep the other 50 It's <laughs> It's a common word, it's something you always have with you. Let's see, your name is... Uh, Melinda Marks, huh? And you're Mickey Walker? Yes, my. Well, it's a thrill to meet you, Mickey. <laughs> One of the immortals. Have you met my daughter, Melinda, Mickey? Yes, I met the charming talent, Melinda. Well, shake hands minutes. and go to your corners and come out fighting, huh? I'm not going to fight Melinda. I always lose there, Groucho. You have a couple of daughters of your own, huh? Yes, so I know. Now, uh, Melinda, you're the youngest, so I'll, I'll start with you. You are the youngest, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> where were you born? I was born in California, Beverly Hills. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, are we going to do the whole thing backwards here? <laughs> How old are you, Melinda? Eight. Eight, huh? You're only eight. I thought you were much older than that. <laughs> Seems like you've been hanging around my house for about 30 years. <laughs> are you, uh, are you married? You know I'm not married. <laughs> That's besides the point, Melinda. I asked everybody that question. You're just another contestant tonight. <laughs> not only that, but hurry up and get married, will you? <laughs> Money doesn't grow on trees, you know. There are a number of boys around with good paper routes. <laughs> and bicycles. I can't support you forever. You know. Let's find out some things about you, uh, Mickey. How many prize fights have you had in your career? 
Oh, I guess Groucho over 200. And among that 200, there were about 17 champions I fought. Yes, you fought them all. What were some of the titles you held? Oh, I held the welterweight, the middleweight, and one time I held the light heavyweight title, and then I fought a draw for the heavyweight title. And I can't lick my wife. Now, I've read that you do a lot of painting, Mickey. You, you must, you, I understand you're pretty good at this, according to the critics. Well, it's a great satisfaction uh, for me in life, Groucho, and the art world been very kind to me. I had a few exhibits, one at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel in New York, the ACA Gallery in New York, and uh, I won first prize in the Marshall Field exhibit in Chicago. They had some of America's best artists at that Isn't that exhibit. wonderful for a guy that held four championships? How is it they don't make any more fighters like you, Mickey, and Greb, and Dempsey, and Henry Armstrong? Ah, uh, they're around yet. They... A lot of clowns around now, aren't they? they uh... Except Marciano. <laughs> well, I don't know. You know, the prize ring is no intellectual stepping stone, I'll say that. I think the youths today are a little too smart to the roughness that's in the ring, and nobody wants to get hurt if they're conscious of that punch coming. You see, in our days, Groucho, we're raised in rough neighborhoods, and we had a fight to exist, that was all. Today, those neighborhoods, uh, which is a good thing for the youth. I think it's great for the well, youth. Well, I think it's good, but uh, on the other hand, uh, I never fought in the ring, and I'm punchier than you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that, <laughs> Mickey, will you, uh, would you forgive Melinda and I if we, if we sang a song? Well, I'd be an honor to listen to Melinda sing. Well, we've been rehearsing a song for some months, and uh, there's no telling what it's going to sound like. And uh, it's the scene from the Mikado, where Coco and Cottershaw Cottershaw is an elderly lady uh, discussing beauty in extreme old age. Mickey, while we're doing it, uh, why don't you do some road work? How about 20... No, why don't you sit over there in the chair there sure. and drink in my beauty while we sing this song? I sure will. Uh, are you ready, Melinda? Yes. I tell you, I'll stand over here. You, you met Mr. Fenneman, haven't you? Yes, yeah, oh, yes, yeah, sure. Hi, Melinda. Comes from China. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mr. Meekin, are you ready? There's beauty in the bell of the blast. There's grandeur in the growling of the gale. There's eloquent up pouring when the lion is roaring and the tiger is the lashing of his tail. Yes, I like to see a tiger from the Congo or the Niger, and especially when he's lashing of his tail. Thou came from the spinner his grin, and if he's only terrified the dolls. But to him, scientific, there's nothing that's terrific in a flying of a fighter from the boat. Yet in spite of all my meekness, if I have a little weakness, it's a passion for a flight of thunderbolts. If that is so, sing Derry down Derry. It's evident Derry at place so warm. Away we'll go and merrily marry. No toddly tarry till day is done. There's beauty in extreme old age. Do you think that you are elderly enough? Information I'm requesting on a subject interesting is a maiden all the better if she's tough. Yes, the Rob the Wise and Minnie, it's a general opinion that she lasts a good long when she's tough. Are you old enough to marry, do you think? Won't you wait till you are 80 in the shade? There's a fascination frantic in a ruin that's romantic. Do you think you are sufficiently decayed? To the matter that you mention, I've given some attention. And I think I am sufficiently decayed. If that is so, sing Derry down Derry, it's evident, evident very up, taste so warm. Away we'll go and merrily marry, no toddly tarry, till day is done, till day is done. Now, right home for you. Brush your teeth and kiss the cat goodnight. <laughs> now, we don't think it'd be fair for Mickey uh, to have Melinda for a partner on the quiz, since I know how much he's learned in school. <laughs> so, uh, we have a special quiz partner for him. George, tell him about it, then. Eh? Well, we invited some people from the care organization to our show tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Miss Geraldine Daly to participate in the quiz, and here she is right now. Miss Daly, if you come in here, please. <clears throat> 
Miss Daly, I'd like you to meet Mickey Walker. Mr. Walker? One of the immortals. I know he is. Did you ever fight him? Not yet. <laughs> well, could you tell us uh, briefly what CARE is? Uh, CARE, Groucho, is a nonprofit organization that sends food to the hungry all over the world. I know all about it, but I wanted these people to know. <laughs> Any money I win tonight will go to feed the Korean war orphans. For instance, uh, CARE can send 28 pounds of food for just one dollar. And if I win $10,000, I could feed all the war orphans in the city of Seoul. If you win $10,000, I'm going with you to Korea. <laughs> all right, let's hope you win a lot of money. Now let's play your bet your life. Remember your partners and one answer between you on everything. In the race for the $1,500, the second couple is leading with $245. You select a dictionary quiz, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Are you ready? We're ready. What are you going to start with? Uh, $100. All right, Jerry, let's shoot the works. We'll Man. start with $100. Mickey was always a gambler. All right, what does acrophobia mean? Uh, acrophobia is, um, it's a disease of, I don't know what. <laughs> uh, uh, I guess. That's a tough one. It's I fear it's fear of high places. Oh, yeah. Well, you lost half your hundred dollars, but you still have fifty dollars. All right, now don't get discouraged. Long, long, long ways to go. You this is only round one, Mickey. All right. This go is the ahead, finish fight. Jerry, what is it? How much? Ninety? Ninety. What is another word for the horn of plenty? Cornucopia. Cornucopia is right. <laughs> Well, you know, I have been Jack Kearns. <laughs> yeah, I got a good part. Yes, you have. You know, I have $140. You got a lot of help in that corner. What are you going to go it. for? Whatever you say. We'll try yeah. for the eight. All right, what is the word meaning an apparatus by which eggs are hatched artificially? Um, you know, it's where you incubator. put the... Incubator. That's right, incubator, incubator is right. You have $220. <laughs> we'll take 70, Groucho. What do you call the document authorizing one person to act or vote for another person? Um, Dean? No, um, Proxy. Proxy is right, huh? Uh, well, here you are for the uh, second ten rounds, huh? Here we go for $1,500. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully, please, and I'll help in the audience. Here it is. The basic elements of geometry in use today are founded on the original proposition set forth by a famous Greek mathematician who lived in 300 B.C. For $1,500, who was this Greek mathematician? Aristotle. No, I'm, I'm sorry. The correct answer is Euclid. You so that means the big question next week will be worth two thousand dollars. Well, they lost the big money, but how much they win the quiz, George? Uh, two hundred and ninety dollars. Well, that's the quiz. not too bad. Congratulations and thanks Thank to you. both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. <laughs>